Hello, I'm Eric Russell. I was a volunteer with the Enfield Municipal Facilities Committee, and I'm here today to take a tour of the Enfield Fire Department with Chief Neely. And uh, thank you, Chief, for giving us a tour of the, the fire department today. Thank you. Um, welcome to the Enfield, town of Enfield Union Street Station Fire Department. Um, this was originally built in 1939 by H.P. Hood Company. The town acquired it in 1961 from H.P. Hood and, and made it into Union Street Fire Station. Um, through, the, through the years, there's been four, four additions to this building um, from the original footprint. Go inside. Uh, one of our primary problems with this uh, building is the, the lack of space and as you can see the closeness of the truck. Um, this is the walkway into the building. This is our gear storage for the guys that leave their gear here at the station. We have approximately uh, 26 members on the department at this point and Again, lack of space, not enough room to accommodate everyone. So when firefighters arrive uh, to respond, they come here to change clothes? They're going to come in in their street clothes as we are today, take off boots, put on gear. Um, and as you see from the water on the floor, we also wash our, wash our trucks after, after they've been out on a call. Uh, um, water accumulates, and unfortunately, it's just it's there and some, some get to have wet feet sometimes. Okay. And it looks like there's only maybe 10 or 11 slots. I think you were telling me that there's 26 firefighters currently? Some, some firefighters maintain, keep their gear with themselves, uh, carry it, carry it in their own vehicles. Um, and these probably are the more, I'd have to look through, but probably the, some of the more active folks that maybe live closer to the station that uh, would come and get their gear and, and equipment. So in looking around here, we, we have a lot of rescue equipment, but it looks uh, like it'd be a little challenging to get some of it out of the station. Almost with every every piece, unless it's just just our main response engine, something has to be moved to to get another another piece of equipment out. Um, if we were going to just take our rescue engine five, would need to be would need to be moved. Um, if engine four was going to go out, pickup would be you know needing to be moved. Um, Any time if if we were going to do a Water rescue, um, engine four would have to be moved to, uh, to be hooked onto the pickup to be, to be towed. Um, kind, of a, <laughs> kind of just a swap of equipment to, to get everything, everything moved around, depending upon what the call is. I mean, the variety of calls that fire departments respond to today, it has changed dramatically. It's, it's, uh, we're, we're the jack of all trades, and Everybody calls the fire department when they have a problem, whether whether from a simple you know gas spill at the at the uh, local service station or you know right on up to fires. But it's kind of a and that and that goes with what we need for training. It's it's grown and, and grown conser considerably through the years. And can all the firefighters drive all of the equipment? No, no. Um, we have we have. Fairly, fairly good training program where they do have to be checked out on, on the equipment, do have, to, do have to be able to operate it, do have to um, know, know the equipment, and that's, a, that's for our safety, for the public safety. So in a hypothetical situation, they, like if you needed to access the boat, they may have to actually wait for a certain number of the fire department to arrive to move the fire truck in front of it before they can access it. Particularly, particularly this engine, engine four being it's it's one of the last two standards in the fleet of the department. Um, 
not everybody drives standards every mo anymore. Um, new equipment that, that we've gotten through the years has all gone to automatic, um, but still need, still need that training program. These, these aren't your car or your pickup. These, these, are, these are trucks that require that training to be able to operate. Okay. And I know that uh, the town has specked out a new fire truck. Uh, were there any considerations around the fire station? Well, as, as the fire station as it sits right now has, has short doors. Um, the, new, the new station that's being planned, the doors would be higher so that we wouldn't have to go to a custom engine um, and have to make you know, some accommodations due to, the, due to the lack of height that we have existing. So, so the new engine had to be customized to accommodate the lower doors? It, being, being, it is a custom engine. It's being built custom mm -hmm. to two specs for, for what we have for space. Yeah. I see a lot of the organized uh, gear, but it, it looks um, it looks like we could use some more storage. Every you know, a lot of the a lot of the equipment that we have is, is seasonal. Um, ice rescue sled, ice suits, water rescue equipment. We do have to rotate equipment. To, um, we we don't have space to to accommodate really all the gear efficiently in a, in a good location uh, to be able to keep, to keep it out year-round, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And is this section with the forestry equipment, is this one of those additions? This was one of the additions that was put on. I don't, I don't have the dates of, of when the additions were done, but looking at the tax uh, cards, it did show four different, four different additions. This bay was done front of the station was done, then there were two additions, an upper and a lower that were done um, on the back of the station, which are both cold storage at this point. Um, so again, we have to be a little bit careful in what we keep in those, in those areas, uh, just due to them not being uh, conditioned at all. And, and looking up at, towards the back, I see the air returns for the heating system are right here in the same room well, yeah, those, are all the, those are all the ducts. The, the complete station is heated by one heating unit, which is located in the meeting room. So all the air travels throughout the station back to the meeting room where the, where the common return is and goes back, to the, goes back to the furnace. That is a major problem because of the exhaust, there's no there's no exhaust capture system within this station. Um, so every time that the truck starts, the exhaust really gets drawn throughout the complete station, especially primarily in the winter. But um, because that air goes back to that to that furnace and and then gets blown back out here, um, this station is not NFPA 1500 compliant, which is exhaust and, and it's part of the life safety code for NFPA. Um, we have no we have no exhaust system. Everything everything breathes the same air in this in this building. Okay. okay. Well, how about we uh, take a tour through the uh, the rest of the station? Yep. And can you show us what firefighters do when they return from a call? Sure. I mean, if 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 there's a call where um, we've been to a fire, and our gear is contaminated with carcinogens from that fire. Um, we, we try to have each firefighter so that they have two sets of gear, so that they can have one washing, one clean, so that they don't have to get into that same gear. Um, but the gear washer is beyond the single stall bathroom that we have. Um, there is no shower, so if if someone is contaminated, we do not have a shower facility here to uh, to allow them to to not uh, not to take that home and not to take it into their own vehicles at this point. And we have the washer for the we have the gear. the gear washer, but is there facilities for cleaning their own personal clothes if you know you don't have something on them? There is there is nothing for anybody's personal clothes. This this is a commercial commercial fire gear extractor washer and um, it, it would not 
you can't use it with with your own clothes and it should be a separate washer for clothes away from the fire gear that has that higher level of contamination on it. Mm -hmm. And is there other gear that needs to be cleaned after it's been used? So with, again, coming from a fire, we're going to have our, our air packs that are going to need to be washed down, going to need to be cleaned. Everybody does have a personal mask and um, wash the wash tub in the kitchen is the is the location that those get washed in and uh, um, it's, it's you know again we're bringing that contamination in and, and hopefully this would be part of what we what we could see with a new building would be to get this separation um, you know carcinogens from a fire are, are huge especially with the products that people the Furniture being built from at this point, it, everything has a huge amount of carcinogens in it. The typical person, 22% of the population will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lifetime. Firefighters percentage is 68%. Um, we've done a good job with air packs. We've done a good job in making sure that they're being used but by bringing those carcinogens back to our facilities, we, we just do not have any way to, to evacuate those at this point. Have an office area. Um, again, reports need to be written after fires and mm -hmm. paperwork. Okay. And is this, I see you have charging set up uh, sort of throughout the station, both here in the office and just past me here. Kind of have, have to, kind of have to get it where we can, just uh, with the electrical that's in the building. Um, we don't have a charging area, so we could be bringing some equipment back in into all these areas that could be carrying, you know, the, the carcinogens. Uh, yeah, a lot of this. I mean, a lot of this equipment goes with us. Radios go with us. Meters go with us. This is this is our meeting room um, where we'll do do some you know in-house training and. Sometimes there's other groups that have used it for for their meetings as well. Um, and this this metal box is that return that spoke about uh, previously. It feeds back to the to the furnace um, for the return air. Yeah. And did I see that the oil tank is, is outside? The oil tank is outside. Um, that was located behind the rescue and we that out because the company wouldn't uh, wouldn't fill it anymore because they were afraid of backing into it and, and not being a problem. Small mechanical room. Um, it uh, houses houses all the mechanical, mm -hmm. hot water heater, the air compressor, which is uh, keeping air onto the truck's brake lines, so that we don't have to wait for that pressure to be built. This unit is is a Poseidon. It's called a Cascade unit. It uh, that's what how we fill our bottles for our fresh air for, for our air packs. Um, the air is filtered. Typically, it wouldn't be in a mechanical room. It would be probably in a space um, more central to, to maybe the apparatus bay so that it would be uh, you know, quicker, easier to fill with. Um, ours is set up so that it's attached to the rescue and we actually fill bottles in the rescue because we only have a single compartment uh, explosion proof cabinet at this time. So without an explosion proof 
uh, area of the building, you have to do it inside the rescue vehicle itself? Or or have the explosion proof cabinet. Okay. You wouldn't you never you right. never fill a bottle outside of this cabinet. Right. It's um, all our all our cat all our bottles are um, spun fiberglass and mm -hmm. not not a large not a large problem with explosion, but you just again that's one of the yes. NFPA requirements and you just mm -hmm. just a no no. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief Neely. I really appreciate thank you taking appreciate the time to give us a tour of uh, the Enfield Fire Station today. Appreciate thank you very time. much. Thank you very much.